At law school, we're taught how to think like a lawyer, but communicating effectively with a client, that's a skill that develops over time. Each year, about 15%, or 150 of our claim reports, involves a breakdown in communication with a client. Here's an actual example from our claim files. A senior lawyer acted for a client after the breakdown of her marriage, and the main issue was the division of their property, including a condo. The husband and wife had both contributed to the down payment equally, and had borrowed the rest secured by a mortgage. An offer was presented by the husband to assume the mortgage and to buy out the wife's interest for $300,000. The lawyer wasn't sure of the value of the property, so he did the right thing. He recommended that the wife get an appraisal to assess the husband's offer. At the time, the wife declined to get that appraisal, and she rejected the husband's offer as too low. Later on, the husband made a new offer. He said he'd pay for the appraisal himself, on condition that he would then buy out the wife's interest for half of the equity based on the appraised value. At this point, the wife told the lawyer she just wanted the matter to be resolved, so she gave hurried instructions to accept the offer and put the matter to rest. When the appraisal came in, however, it resulted in a buyout which was far lower than the original offer and even less than the wife's portion of the down payment. The wife refused to go through with the agreement. She told the lawyer she obviously only meant to accept the new offer if it secured her down payment at a minimum. In this case, the wife never did file a claim against the lawyer in the courts, but facing pressure from an unhappy client and feeling that he could have handled the offer better, the lawyer decided to write off a fairly sizable final account. Here's what our lawyer said. Here are a few more tips. First, try to start from a place of empathy. As lawyers, we deal with other counsel, courts, and the legal process every day, but most clients don't. If you take a few minutes to put yourself in the client's shoes, you're more likely to anticipate questions they might not ask and to explain things in a language the client can understand. A little empathy goes a long way. Second, practice active listening. As lawyers, our role is to give advice and we wanna jump in and share our thoughts. And sometimes because we are so eager to advise, we don't listen well. The classic tip, which is still a good one, is to repeat back to your client what you think you've heard. This gives them the opportunity to correct or clarify, and it helps you internalize what they're telling you. Third, consider setting expectations on communications at the very first meeting. Tell the client how often you'll communicate and how and when you'll respond to them. You may also want to under-promise and over-deliver in this respect. Clients do tend to remember if you promise a response and then don't come through. Finally, document everything that you do communicate. This is one of the most critical steps in any practice for client management and risk management. It starts with the retainer letter. Set out clearly what work you'll do and what you won't be doing. If you withdraw or a retainer ends, make sure your standard practice is to send a disengagement letter to avoid any confusion about whether you're still retained. Make sure you set out any future deadlines, limitations, or impending steps as well. The importance of taking detailed notes, confirming client instructions and advice given, can't be overstated. If you did not write it down, you're inviting a situation where the client's recollection will be preferred to yours. You're the professional who is expected to take notes, not the client. In summary, your communication risk can be managed. Approach clients with empathy, practice active listening, be proactive about how and when you'll communicate with a client, and document every step of the way.